Identiflight has received acceptance from the Grand East Region authorities in France. And Identiflight is a U.S.-based company, I think it's based in Colorado, that provides bird detection systems for wind farms. Uh, and their system has, and Joel, I don't know if you've seen this thing, but it's basically a series of cameras wrapped around a, a pole that's looking in all directions. Then it has a camera that swivels around. Uh, the, the, the cameras that are sort of fixed are looking for the bird. And then the, the swivel camera, which has stereo vision, locates it, zooms in on, identifies it. The acceptance of Identify is the first time that French authorities have validated an automated system for reducing bird collisions in wind farms. Uh, the system can identify multiple species of protected birds, including the red kite, which is a big deal in France. Uh, so the success of the system in, in reducing syst- uh, mortality rates supports, obviously, French and EU regulations for protecting bird species. And, and Rosemary, you've done a little, a little bit of research on this system. It does seem to be really complicated in, in, in the fact that it predicts where the birds are flying and then only slows down turbines in the bird's path. Uh, so I talked to somebody who was managing the environmental stuff at a wind farm that uses this system. And he told me about how it, had, how it works and how it had worked for them in, in, um, yeah, in actuality. I think they've, been, they've had it for a few years now, okay. so they've got the chance to see how it works. They have um, one of these systems on a little mast. They're not that tall. I think they're like maybe 10, 10 metre tall kind of mast. You put um, a camera system on. It's scanning the sky. When it sees something bird-like, then it will um, it will figure out what kind of bird it is because usually you don't care about every single bird death. There's, you know, specific species that you're targeting. Um, and he said that um, when they're out at sight, the system will recognise uh, a bird before any, you know, human that's there has, has noticed it. So they can see it pretty far away. For this wind farm anyway, there's about one mast per three turbines-ish. They have to be able to see see the turbines. There's two cylinders um, around each turbine. And when the bird reaches the outer cylinder, um, that's when the system goes, okay, we need to, um, you know, watch this bird now. And then when it reaches the inner cylinder, then they're like, okay, slow down. And then they pitch the blades and then it, you know, it, it slows down and, and pinwheels. Um, and the, it, it's really active on this particular site. They had a lot of eagles that they were worried about. Um, and they saw that they're getting 400 turbine shutdowns per day on average over the, we- uh, over the year. There's more in summer than winter takes about 30 to 60 seconds to pitch the blades to slow, depending on what the wind conditions are like. 1.4 minutes per shutdown. Um, and so that's a lot of activity. But he said overall the AEP loss, the annual energy production loss, is less than 1%. And obviously like a lot less than some of the other strategies that we've heard are, you know, like shut down every night or shut down for the month of May or, you, you know, something something like that, which is obviously going to give way higher um, AEP losses. So they've been pretty happy. They've actually got more eagles on the site now than they had before the winter uh, wind farm was built. So, um, you know, it's working, working pretty well. And they've got really low um, bird deaths from the turbines with good coverage. And they're just in the middle of doing an, an upgrade to add in another another system to cover this one turbine that's a bit a bit shaded and, um, a, you know, a bit shaded from view. And so they have seen some deaths from that particular turbine and they're pretty confident when they add this extra system that they're going to um, have close to no deaths from the, the birds that they're targeting. So what they're seeing, he told me the number of deaths they're seeing, about one bird and one bat death per, per turbine, but um, nearly all of those are non-targeted birds. Yeah, so overall it's been really successful. You know, I, I saw this this uh, company actually put back in 2019 or so. I think it was one of the first ones that I saw in the market, right? There's Envision and there's Envisionist, I think it was, and there's, there's a couple other ones out there. Robin Radar is another one. Yeah, that they're so advanced now. I'm starting to see, in my mind, I'm thinking about different capabilities for this too, right? I'm thinking if I was a, if I was a major airport, I would want to put this out at an airport. And I and I would and I would want the AI to be able to recognize drones so I could see when that threat is coming in. Right. Or a military base and drones and certain things like that, because if you can do this for birds already, you can definitely catch pick pick drones out of the sky. Yeah, that's really true. You, I, I, you know, that's one of the questions about wind turbines is 
the stopping the use of drones, at least in the states, right? They don't want you flying drones around wind turbines because of the damage. And maybe the wind turbines need to protect themselves a little bit. But the, the, this being a, a regulation-based system, right, it, it's there to satisfy regulation. We do not have that same requirement in the United States. Because of the success of the system, is that going to then encourage U.S. regulators to, to go down this route? I talked to a, a guy um, also, I've been talking a lot about people to people about birds and wind farms because I've got a video coming out on that um, probably around the same time that this episode will be released. But do you guys remember that there was a study, um, it's mentioned a lot in the media, about how you can just paint one of the wind turbine blades black and then, you know, birds won't won't die anymore. And, you know, it's always mentioned in the media, this study, but never really in practice. Um, so I got in touch with the lead researcher from, from that paper to, to talk about that. One interesting thing that he told me was that um, in there was one U.S. state who saw that study and were trying to mandate that it um, <laughs> that it had to be a one blade had to be painted black on every wind farm in that state. Um, where was it? Oregon, he said. Um, and so the legislation passed, but then they realized that it was kind of infeasible and also silly because this guy, um, you know, this researcher, he's an ecologist, right? He's not not an engineer, but he said, you know, we painted. Um, blades on three turbines in one wind farm on one Norwegian island. You can't just extrapolate that over the whole world. You know, they're highly likely that it's not going to work like this for every bird species in every ecosystem. And in fact, sometimes it might actually do more harm than good. So um, you really need to recreate the study before you start mandating that everyone does it. But I think that's um, interesting that you know, his idea, the idea that they were testing is so simple that it kind of just caught on. Everyone's like, oh, well, why wouldn't you do it? And don't really think actually there are even really simple ideas can cause negative outcomes. And, you know, I'll talk a bit about some of the negative engineering outcomes that you might have if you, you know, wanted to try and um, have every third blade be black. Um, yeah. So that was interesting. So there has been people attempt to legislate, but I always think it's a bit wrong when they try and, you know, legislate a, a technology that has to be used rather than legislate an, an outcome and then let people choose the, the technology that suits them best. And that's specifically tough in the United States because people don't like being told exactly what they have to do. You know, the, 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 here's the difference, too, in the states um, that I don't think a lot of people realize in the wind in industry as far as regulating birds. In the states, the individual, individual states don't have a whole lot of laws around these things, right? For the most part, there's none, except for when the federal oversight happens, right? So the federal oversight, when it's the U.S. Forest Service and it's a protected species, like, and most of those are raptors, right? It's a certain kind of eagle or, uh, you know, like the sage grouse. I know that people that are operating wind farms up in Wyoming and Montana, they can't bring cranes on site during the month of like, you know, June and July because the sage grouse are mating um, and those kind of things. But the big one will be when as soon as we start having wind farms that take down flocks of ducks and geese, because when you get into the Federal Migratory Bird Act, and that's what regulates all the hunting of ducks and geese and why you have to have a federal stamp, because the federal laws start to start to dictate what can happen with these birds because they cross state lines regularly. And that's when you're going to start, we're going to start running into trouble. So if some some senator from some state brings up the fact that a flock of ducks was taken down by a wind turbine, well, then we'll have issues. Uh, and that's where you'll start to see legislation, I think. Yeah, well, it was really interesting in the research I did for this video on birds that I'm doing. I mean, I have to, I, I would be remiss to not mention in a segment about birds and wind turbines to say, you know, it's like hundreds of thousands, maybe a million birds are dying in the US from wind farms each year. And it's billions with a B that are, <laughs> are dying from cats each year. And then, you know, in between there's power lines and buildings and cars. So, you know, it's it's a small problem um, in terms of, you know, total numbers of ways that humans are causing birds to die, not to mention climate change. Um, but, you know, so that aside, it is still a problem, albeit a small one. The biggest changes have come just simply from wind turbine design. So in probably the most famous example of wind turbines killing birds is the Altamont Wind Farm in California. It was one of the first, I think, the first wind farms in the, the U.S. And it was in an area where there was just heaps of heaps of birds, um, heaps of, uh, you know, important birds as well. Or I guess every bird's important, but, you know, um, important species. Um, and they, because it's a really old wind farm, I think it started 
getting installed in the 1980s. You can imagine wind turbine design has changed a lot since then, and a lot of those original wind turbines have been replaced with modern ones. So they did a study um, looking at, in the same area, how many birds were dying from the old wind turbines compared to the modern ones. And per energy per unit of energy produced, it was 66% lower deaths just simply from modern turbine technologies. So the old turbines were small, their blades came closer to the ground, um, and they, they spin faster, the small wind turbines, because, you know, it's the tip speed that's important. So a small turbine can <laughs> have more um, RPM to keep the same tip speed. But I think the most crucial thing was the tower design. Old turbines had either had a lattice tower structure, you know, like a, um, like a power line a pylon, um, or they had an external ladder. And those are really, really great places for birds to rest or even roost on them. Um, same for bats. And so they would have this location that they really wanted to hang out. And then every time that they took off from there, they were taking off right directly into the path of a, a turbine rotor. So you can imagine that's quite hazardous compared to today's towers, which one, they're, they're taller and the blades are further away. Um, and there's nowhere to perch on a modern wind turbine tower. It's just a sleek tube of metal um, with not, you know, there's no external ladders and stuff anymore either. So um, just inherently in the design, it's two thirds reduction. With, and that's before you add any, you know, radar system or AI vision or sonic deterrence or, you know, any of the other methods. Um, and then the other big thing is just sighting. You know, you're like now you wouldn't put a wind farm probably. Um, well, before you put install a wind farm, you have a check to see if there's any uh, vulnerable species that are relying on that area. Um, and where you do see that there are, then you require additional measures to even further reduce bird deaths. So it's, it's come a long way. 